All right, so the two hardest parts about graphing a trigonometric function is when there is a period change and a phase shift. Now, this one does not have a phase shift. How do I know? There is no H. There's no number inside of the parentheses subtracting. Okay, so we just have a period uh, change, which is not that bad. So here we go. First, let's find our period. I know there's the amplitude and the vertical shift, but those ones are so simple, I like to save them to last. So first, let's get the regular period out, which is 2 pi, and then we're going to divide that by the number that's multiplying to the x, which is 2, and then we're going to get pi. Our period is pi. And uh, like I said, we have no phase shift. I'm just going to write none right there. Those are the first two I like to do um, when I graph. Now, I'm calling this the cheat graph. It is an optional graph. You don't have to do it this way. But I like doing it because it is not scaled. This graph is not scaled. That means I could make my own numbers on it. So let's do that. <clears throat> because there's no phase shift, we're going to start at 0. And then we're going to go to pi. That's our period. So now we, can, we need to find uh, the numbers that go in the middle. Um, and there's other ways to do this. I'm going to show you one way. One way is to take the period, which is pi, and we're going to divide that by 4. Why? Because we have four sections. It's not you know, the only way to do it. This is just the way I'm going to do it. Now, there's no simplifying to do, so I could just use pi over 4. So I'm going to say pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and the last one would be 4 pi over 4, which you all know simplifies to pi. And this one right here simplifies to pi over 2. But I'm going to leave them unsimplified for now. Now we graph. Now because this is a sine function, y'all know that the sine function goes like this. We start at the midline, then we have a max, and then we go back to the midline, then we have a min, and then we go back to the midline. So there's three midline points, a max and a min. <clears throat> so now we need to look at our amplitude and our midline. Okay, we need the midline first because we're going to count the amplitude from the midline. So because our midline, uh, because our function is shifted down 1, we know our midline is at negative 1. This is not an x-axis, people. This is the negative 1 axis. It is a midline. So now I need to count up 3 and down 3. Por qué? Because the amplitude is 3. So if I count up 3, that would be 1, 2, 3. What would that number be? Yep, that would be 2. If you're not sure, go ahead and write out the other numbers. 0, 1, 2, that's 3. Now I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. So that means negative 1 minus 3, which would be negative 4. And you can write the numbers here too, if that helps. <coughs> now because there's no negative here, I don't have to worry about any flipping going on. Now, I just need to graph my midline, maximum, midline, minimum, and midline. So here's our midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline. This is our graph. Yay. If you got that going on, you got it going on. Okay. So let's go. Uh, let's fix that. Bang. Okay. So now, how do we transfer this over? to a scaled graph. This graph over here is scaled for us. See, there's a 1 right here, so we know that all these tick marks are counting by 1. And then we have a pi right here, which means all these tick marks are coming from our unit circle. Now, if, it, if this helps you, I don't know if it does. You see how there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sections for pi? These tick marks are counting by pi over 6. Not sure if that helps, but for some it might. So this is pi over 6. That means this would be 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, which simplifies the pi. But I don't need to write all those. What I need to do is I need to copy this graph onto this graph, but it's going to look different. See our midline? Our midline's at negative 1. So we're going to have to draw a midline over here. Now I'm going to draw my midline dotted because the x-axis is solid. I want to make them different. So there's my midline. And then um, this first point right here is on 
the y-axis. Right, we're at 0, negative 1. So I'm going to put a dot right here. The next one is pi over 4. <coughs> now, if this is pi over 6 and this is 2 pi over 6, or you can simplify that to be pi over 3, pi over 4 would be right in the middle. So at pi over 4, we're going to go up to positive 2. So I'm going to go up here to positive 2 and put a dot. And then we're going to go back to the midline at 2 pi over 4, which is the same as pi over 2. So we have midline, max, midline. You see how we're just following this pattern right here? Now we have a minimum. Hold on, you guys have questions. Let that finish. Now we have a minimum. Our minimum is at 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 would be between pi over 2 and pi just like pi over 4 is between 0 and pi over 2. So this right here is 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to go down to my minimum. What's my minimum? Negative 4. Negative 4. So I've got to go down to right there. Because if I count this, this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then I'm going to go back to the midline at pi. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for any questions you guys. Oh, that's a horrible curvy line. I need a nice curvy line. Oh, that's nice right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, pause for questions. What you guys got for me? Okay, so Norma asked a question. She was asking about this point. Like, how come, how come pi over 4 is right between pi over 6 and pi over 3? One way to think about that is our unit circle. Whoa, that's a bad circle. Okay, uh, we have right in the middle is pi over 4. Remember that? Yes, you do. And then we have an angle there and an angle right there. This angle right here, that's your pi over 6. And this is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 is right here. So pi over 4 is between <coughs> pi over 6 and pi over 3. That's why I put it right there. So let's finish off our graph. We continue the pattern. We have um, our maximum right in the middle, midline, minimum right in the middle. When I say middle, I mean the middle of these two guys right here. And then we have our midline. That's the end of that. So let's finish fi fi filling out our table up here. Some of these are kind of unnecessary. Our y-intercept, easy peasy, negative 1. X-intercepts, this one is too hard. Okay, So I'm going to say no on this one. <clears throat> there are x-intercepts, but these are hard to find. They're not midline intercepts. They are x-intercepts. So when they're hard to find like this, um, we're not going to worry about those. Our maximums, let's see, our maximums, uh, what's this maximum? That one's the easiest to see. It is at 2. And if we were to put them as coordinates, we would say pi over 4 and 2. What would be the next maximum point? So that's pi over 4, 2. What would be this one? Well, I know that the distance between these is pi. How do we know it's pi? Because that's what the period is. Oh. Pi is the same as 4 pi over 4. So what would 1 pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 4 be? 5 pi over 4. So our next maximum would be 5 pi over 4, 2. Now the, the generic way to write this, which is not that important to me right now, but I'm going to show you anyways, is pi over 4 plus, that's a 4, plus, um, let's say, n times pi. 2. It's pretty hideous. So I just wrote this to include all of the x values instead of writing them like this. Uh, the minimum would be negative 4. And our first minimum is at 3 pi over 4. And if we want to find the next one, we're going to have to write, or we're going to have to add 4 pi over 4 to this. So I'm going to go ahead and skip right to the generic one. It's 3 pi over 4 plus n pi's, comma, uh, negative 4. Okay, now I know th this part is kind of confusing. Maybe, um, maybe you're not getting it. But I don't want you to worry about that right now because these are the most important to me. You understand what the maximum are right there, okay? 
that it's 2 and negative 4. 